so one h nmr that is uh, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy as the name suggests we study the nucleus in this particular technique unlike other spectroscopy techniques like uv ir it is the study of nucleus in 1h nmr spectroscopy in uv spectroscopy we study electronic transitions by using ir spectroscopy we uh, determine various functional groups present in the structure okay but by 1h nmr spectroscopy we study nucleus now let us take this example in this particular structure okay see if i give you any unknown uh, powder and if i ask you to determine what is the chemical structure for this particular powder okay then what do we do okay then how this 1h nmr spectroscopy help us now in this particular structure nucleus means exactly what this is the whole molecule this is the whole molecule right there are uh, carbons there are hydrogens there is oxygen so so many atoms are there in this particular molecule now each atom has its own nucleus oxygen will have its own nucleus carbon has its own nucleus hydrogen have has its own nucleus okay so in 1h nmr spectroscopy as the name 1h nmr spectroscopy as the name suggests in 1h nmr spectroscopy we study the nucleus of hydrogen only so using this 1h nmr spectroscopy we shall know the how many hydrogens are present in that particular structure uh, what is the position of this hydrogen whether that hydrogen is attached to any electronegative group like oxygen sulfur whether that hydrogen is a part of aromatic ring whether that hydrogen uh, is just the part of any alkyl chain so such information we get using 1h nmr spectroscopy and using all these informations we can predict the structure of the unknown compound so what is inside the nucleus that we will see now okay so this is the same structure which i had shown you on the earlier slide now in this particular structure we have to focus on this hydrogen okay we have to focus on this hydrogen now this hydrogen as i told you we are studying nucleus of this hydrogen suppose this orange color uh, sphere which is there on the slide that is the nucleus of the hydrogen now what is there inside the nucleus protons and neutrons okay these protons and neutrons they spin around their own axis so this is the axis for that particular nucleus and they spin around their nucleus uh, they spin around their axis uh, just like you can imagine the spinning earth just as earth spins around its own axis the nucleus also spins around o its own axis now the spin of nucleus is the resultant spin of protons and neutrons each spin has magnitude of half magnitude of the spin of the nucleus is because of protons and neutrons that means overall spin of the nucleus depend on spin of protons and neutrons which are present in the nucleus if these spins are paired against each other the nucleus of that atom possess no overall spin let us understand more about it look at this example of c12 in the nucleus of c12 carbon there are six protons and six neutrons okay so among these six protons each proton is uh, spinning around its own axis okay they are spinning around it, its own axis and they are paired they are paired here also neutron each neutron is spinning around its own axis 
they are paired so they will just cancel each other spin so this particular nucleus doesn't have its overall spin no spin okay and therefore we cannot study c12 nucleus using nmr spectroscopy using nmr technique we cannot study c12 uh, nucleus but un unlike c12 this is the next example for c13 whose nucleus has six protons into it six protons which are spinning around their own axis and it has seven neutrons which are spinning around their own axis and these all protons are paired neutrons are paired but one neutron which is unpaired and as i told you on the earlier slide that each each spin uh, magnitude is half okay so this half is nothing but the spin quantum number of this particular nucleus so only such nucleus which has which have their overall spin only such nucleus nuclei can be studied using technique nmr what we have learned just now we have learned only those nuclei which possess an overall spin can be studied by nmr the nuclei which have been studied so far with nmr are 1h c13 f19 p31 and n15 among these 1h and c13 have been uh, very commonly studied and they are helping for the prediction of structure of unknown compounds almost every element has an isotope with spin this 1h nmr spectroscopy is also called as proton nmr or pmr because in the nucleus of hydrogen there is only one proton so one proton that means it is unpaired so the spin quantum number is half spin quantum number which is denoted by i which is which is responsible for the overall spin of hydrogen nucleus so when we study hydrogen nucleus means we are studying the spinning proton hence we call it as proton nmr or pmr interchangeably so hence forth in the uh, subsequent slides i would be calling hydrogen nucleus as proton before we proceed further for prediction of 1h nmr spectrum for a known structure we should know what information we get from 1h nmr spectrum first we understand the number of peaks present in the 1h nmr spectrum and these number of peaks give us idea about the number of sets of equivalent protons present in that particular structure second important point is intensity of signal so intensity of signal gives us information about the height of the peak and that height of the peak represents the number of protons represented by that particular peak third is position of signal so in the nmr spectrum where exactly that peak is appearing at which position that means at which chemical shift value the peak is appearing that will give us an idea about the neighbors of that particular hydrogen whether that hydrogen is attached to any um, suppose benzene ring or that is aldehydic hydrogen allylic hydrogen or it is just a part of any alkyl chain so these things we understand by the position of signal peak multiplicity in nmr we find the splitted peaks this peak splitting is because of spin spin coupling and it is based on n plus 1 rule intensity of the peaks in multiplets is calculated using pascal's triangle 